In our next video on thermochemistry, we're going to look at exothermic and endothermic reactions. So what are exothermic and endothermic? Well, an exothermic reaction is a reaction that puts heat off into the system. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that can only happen if it receives heat from outside the system. So that's the difference between the two. And so to give you kind of an, a feel for it, exothermic reaction gives off heat. So you, it supplies heat to the environment. An endothermic reaction, heat must be supplied, otherwise the reaction will not take place. So here are the examples. Let's say we have some hydrogen gas and some oxygen gas. When you put that together, you end up with water. Water is a lower energy state. Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas is a higher energy state. So going from a higher to lower energy state, the system gives off heat or the reaction gives off heat. And so heat is supplied to the environment and therefore it's exothermic. The next reaction is we have uh, mercury oxide, it's a solid, and in order to turn that into mercury and oxygen gas, it will not do that in its own, you have to supply heat. So you have to heat it up, and when you heat it up to high temperatures, this will dissociate into hydrogen liquid and oxygen gas. And so it, it requires heat, and therefore we call it an endothermic reaction. Another way to graphically represent that is to imagine a reaction that looks like this. In the case of the first example, we start off with hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. These are the reactants, and they are in what we would call a higher energy state. So then we have a reaction going from here to here, where we end up with, with uh, water, H2O, water. This is the product. Heat is given off in the reaction, so we go from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, and that will be a natural reaction. This will occur all on its own, no help needed. You put hydrogen and oxygen together, you will end up with water. On the other case, the second example, we start with the reactant, uh, mercury oxide, and we have to heat it, we have to supply heat, because, wow, that's not a very good way to write, to write supplied. Let me try, correct that. There we go. I don't know what language that was. It wasn't English. All right. So when we start out with this, uh, these reactants, uh, mercury oxide, we need to supply heat, otherwise the reaction will not take place because this is a lower energy state and this is a higher energy state. It will never naturally go from here to there. Heat will be supplied. If heat is supplied, then indeed the reaction will take place. Mercury will dissociate from the oxygen, so we have liquid mercury and oxygen gas, and therefore we call that endothermic because heat is supplied and the reaction goes from a low energy state to a high energy state for the products. And that hopefully gives you a good feeling of what we mean by exothermic and endothermic. So again, exothermic reaction can only, will always occur because it gives off heat, so it readily will take place. Endothermic means it can only happen if heat is supplied to reactants so they can go ahead and react into a, a product that has a higher energy state. And then later on we'll talk about enthalpy and then you can see how that all fits together. So that's how we look at the endothermic and exothermic reactions.